start. Um, before we begin, as always, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that we're on the lands of the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Annie Joy Murphy Wanden, the NGV's elder in residence, can't be here today um, because she's unwell, but she's asked me to come along and to just welcome you all on her behalf and uh, in her words to say Waminjika, which means welcome uh, to the lands of the Wurundjeri people. So please uh, enjoy today, go around and see everything. We're absolutely thrilled to have this really exciting talk with Smack and Sophie. So um, if you'd all join me in welcoming them now, thank you. Thanks, Miles. Um, I'd also like to say welcome, everyone, and extend a special welcome to NGV members who are here this morning. Um, we're very lucky to be here with Smack McCrenna. Um, and I'd also would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people. Um, and as we kick off the conversation, reflect on the lands on which we gather um, and enjoy all of this amazing art that we're here to celebrate, talk about, unpack, and see all day, all summer. Um, Smack is a Brisbane-born, LA-based, multi-hyphenate. She's a dancer, actor, comedian, and artist. Um, she's probably one of the most popular artists inst installed for Triennial. Um, I've really been enjoying seeing everyone stop by Gallery Kitchen and soon the Great Hall with the Emoji series, so come back to see that. Um, I'd like to give her a warm welcome. Thanks, everyone. Um, so, Smack, can you t start off by telling me a little bit about how you have intersected your multi talented, multi-skilled background, starting as, I guess, in dance and acting, um, and c where you are today as a, an artist at the NGV Triennial. How have you merged and diverged and converged all of your skills, and how does art sit within your practice? Um, hello, everyone. So, yeah, I mean, I guess originally, initially, as a kid, at like five years old, I started dancing. Um, which soon went into drama classes, theater classes. I did comedy, physical theater, and um, musicals. And then in high school, went into more photography, visual arts, editing, things like that. And then at some point, I realized that my favorite thing to do was just put it all together. <laughs> and I didn't really know how to do that. But I think that what you guys see in the videos is a pretty good representation of all of it together and it, it kind of is my favorite way to do it, which is sort of, I guess, digital performance art in a way. Um, but it's all intersected. I think everything I do naturally has some sort of physicality to it because that is my training. But my passion is actually comedy, so I always have an underlining tone of humor or kind of sarcasm approach, I guess. Um, and then on top of that with social media, especially now in the last few years since I've been doing more digital content, um, I've kind of created this sort of branding of like a lo-fi execution, which to me also is quite humorous in contrast with like a you know beautiful dance, sometimes beautiful. Um, but anyway, it's all intersected. And I think the best way, because I don't know sometimes how to describe myself, <laughs> I think an artist is the best way to, to label it. <laughs> well, it's quite an open-ended label. And you're, you're really celebrated. And what I love about your work is that it's so unapologetic. Like, I've researched and observed and, like, enjoyed a lot of your other creative expression in commercial and dance um, and film. Um, can you tell me about what art has enabled you to do specifically? Is it, is it, have you got more agency because of its more open-ended, less, well, you can choose whether you want to collaborate or not? Absolutely, so, bit of backstory. I've lived in Los Angeles for the last 10 years, and while over there I've been working professionally as a dancer and actor, which means all the work I've done has actually been under someone else's direction. I get auditions uh, with scripts or choreography, and I'm performing it, but I don't always have creative control. Um, so when I'm doing my own art, 
it's the most creative and most free I've ever felt and it's absolutely unapologetic, definitely authentic. And so I think for me, it's been so fulfilling in recent years seeing how much of a response that's gotten com in comparison to maybe my Hollywood professional career. And I think that, yeah, th there's nothing more rewarding for me than experiencing that, which is super awesome <laughs> and thankful. We're but very, well, we're very grateful that you're doing it your way because obviously there's been a huge uptake and following of your um, short form performance art that's shared through social media channels. Um, Hydraulic Press Girl, which is in the gallery kitchen, um, that's received over one billion views across channels and ever increasing. Um, can you tell me why and how you think people are resonating with it so much? Like it's tapping into some particularities of internet culture from maybe a bit of, I don't know if people know what ASMR is, but it's kind of this brain tickling, um, satisfying video content, as well as reaction videos. There's this whole language on the internet. What do you think is happening when people see your interpretation of internet culture? You know what, sometimes it's hard to answer that because I never expected to have a response like this. For me, when I make videos like this, because I have a few other series, I guess, at a similar tone, I'm doing it because I thought it was fun. I did not expect other people to be drawn in as much as as they have been. And it is a question of like, what are they drawn to? It, I mean, visually, it, it is stimulating. I think it falls into the category of oddly satisfying. Um, for some reason, people enjoy things getting squished. Uh, and then with the added element of the performance, which is like, you know, contrasting this tragedy with like a humorous sort of delicate version of it, choreography wise, um, I think people are almost like, it may be confused at first and they're looking at both sides and then comparing and it kind of makes it more interactive um, because there's so much happening. I don't know, people ju just want to watch it on loop. <laughs> well, obviously you've got a bit of an instinct for enjoying the reaction videos and now you, and you're creative. So the combination of appealing to what appeals to you and then bringing your own kind of interpretation, it's a magic formula. Can you tell me a bit about how you make hydraulic press girl like you've you watch the videos and then what <laughs> I mean yes I watch the videos and it just looks like choreography to me I mean that I don't technically have to change the way I see it I only ever see it as a dance that's just a natural thing that I, I guess as a dancer I have if I see a chair I'm like yeah that I can I can in imitate that through dance I mean I just see things as choreography uh, but then also with my passion for humor, I see it in a funny way as well. I don't want to take it too seriously. So technically the process with the Hydraulic Press Girl is I do see the videos of the objects being crushed. And if I know I can match an outfit to it, I use it. <laughs> it's um, Obviously you'll, you can see that there's a lot of different outfit changes and um, you, there's a lot. I'm not trying to go outsource every single outfit, so I kind of do base it on what I have at hand, um, which is also one of the most fun parts for me is styling, uh, you know, because in a way I'm trying to make it more, it's relatable. I'm, I'm not trying to make it unattainable styling and, and costuming. It's like, what can I grab from my, from my wardrobe? And I think that also, like, makes it um, more inviting for the general public to see because maybe you could do that too. <laughs> Like that, I think that helps with the social media aspect. Um, what else? The process. But yeah, honestly, when I hit record, when I'm filming them, uh, I don't technically do rehearsal. I just I memorize the, the moments of the squishing video as choreography in my head, and then I just do it. <laughs> and what about emoji? Emoji for anyone who hasn't seen it, because it's actually a NGV debut, right? Yeah, you've, we've seen snippets on Smack socials, um, but it's going to be three screens in Great Hall from Tuesday. Um, yeah, tell me about what that work looks like and how you conceptualised it and uh, how is it different to Hydraulic Presco? So we all know what an emoji is. We know that there's thousands of them. Um, and the same thing, sometimes when I use emojis, I'm like, that looks like a dance. <laughs> 
you know, the, the shape of it, and I, I know I can uh, create the color of it with the, the color palette. And so similar to how I have the side-by-side -side concept where you see the, the object or the subject, and then you see me imitating it, um, this series that will be here from Tuesday is me imitating emojis. And um, this will be series one, because there's thousands of them. I only did, I think, 200. <laughs> It's Which 30 is, minutes worth of emojis. It's, it's a 30-minute video of um, me performing the emoji. Um, it, it, was, it was really fun to make, and it, it was something I made specifically for this exhibit. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come back for that one. It's a real laugh. And can you tell me, on that note of humour, what's it like seeing people lol to your work Physically, you're here. It's not on a st someone's com um, iPhone or computer in the privacy of their own home. You're there, creeping in the background, getting to see people interact with your work. What's the difference for you? That's been one of the most special things um, coming to Melbourne and seeing the first few days of this exhibit so far is this series has been online for a couple of years and I've seen the response in terms of numbers and how widespread it's been, but I've never seen people actually react to it. And just standing in the cafe, even just 10 minutes ago, seeing the kids kind of in awe of the screen and then their parents are trying to get them to, to come away and they, they want to sit down and just keep watching it. It's, I'm getting chills thinking about it because it has been so special to like actually witness that for the first time. And yeah, it, it's really fun to see their different reactions and, and how they're taking it in and wanting to like even keep watching it. It's really special. Do you think it changes like the meaning and the what people walk away with when they see it in this new environment? I think like in the gallery setting, something that you want when you go to any gallery is to walk away with a feeling and so I think, yeah, I mean, people are experiencing it in their own way, but I think it is affecting people where they can walk away and, and talk about it. They can, they're sharing the emotion and possibly even seeing my performance. There's some of those videos where I'm laughing at myself in the video, and maybe they are recognizing that's kind of breaking the fourth wall. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope that people can get some sort of sense of enjoyment from it or... Maybe you're confused by it, amused, whatever it may be, but I, I hope that it is creating a feeling and something that you can like walk away with it and think about and remember. What's been, it, what's been the reaction based on, I guess, all the optics? Like you, on social media, you get literal evidence to what people are thinking. Can you tell me a bit about how people are responding to, how people responded to your work when they saw it on social media? Like... How did they champion you? It's, it's kind of having this support has led to the curatorial team seeing your work, really. Yeah, I mean, if we look at it simply, the reason I'm here is because of internet culture. I mean, the way that the internet just completely took this concept by storm and just like spread it all over. I saw that people were tagging their friends, tagging their family, they were sending it to friends, they were sharing it to their own pages. Um, and I would see the comments, I, I, I'm there too witnessing it and I'm seeing people constantly say, this is art, this is performance art. People would be saying, this should be in a museum. And it was sort of an ongoing joke with my direct audience for years. And now I got to share with them that actually this came true. And it's honestly because of this collective support that we had. Um, I, I never imagined it to be like that, but how interactive it's been has been so fun that they've, I've had this audience from day one see the journey and now to see it come here was like mind blowing. And I think for them as well, I mean, everyone who's been kind of part of it has been part of it. So it's been a, a definitely a, um, a collective way. It's like a full circle moment. This is definitely full <laughs> circle. I mean, I, I did go to art school for university. Uh, I did drop out um, for a different opportunity. But again, like I, I, being in a gallery setting for some reason felt unattainable to me. Even, you know, I'm a professional dancer first and then actor. And then I do, you know, different theater things. But when I think of a gallery setting, I'm thinking of the top people in the world. This is, it's such a larger than life experience. And I, 
I honestly never really thought I would ever be in that room, especially amongst the, the people that are here, the other artists. So yeah, it, it's take, it, you know what, hasn't really sunk in yet for me. <laughs> well, we're all very inspired and you know, we hope that, well, I hope in general that art becomes increasingly intersectional and representing lots of different voices, lots of different skills and the way that they're expressed in a creative way and you really epitomize that. So congratulations, Smack. Thank you for being part of NTV Triennial. Um, there's more um, talks to come today. They're 15 minutes, most of them, so they're really easy to engage and get a snapshot and hear the voices of um, the amazing people who are part of the Triennial. Thank you, Smack. Um, Thank you. Thanks for coming, everyone. And at 12 o'clock, we've got Miles Russell Cook, Senior Curator of Australian First Nation Art, in conversation with some of the amazing master weavers from Man and Greta who worked on the Mundira fish fence. Um, that's also part of Triennial, so come back for that one. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>